Fish Tessellation. We're going to make a tessellation today. The definition of a tessellation says the process or art of tessellating a surface or the state of being tessellated. That means it's an arrangement of shapes closely fitted together, especially of polygons in a repeated pattern without any gaps or overlapping. So for this project, you're going to need some tape, scissors, a pencil, and then some type of thicker paper like an index card or maybe some cardstock paper. So first what we're going to do is we're going to make a square. Now if you have an index card, I'm going to show you an easy way to make that into a square without using a ruler. So I'm going to cut off just this end to it and then I'm going to use that end to use it as a measuring tool. So I'm going to measure out the distance with this little end that I have. I'm making two marks. Then I'm going to take it and kind of use it as a straight edge. So I'm going to use my pencil, push against that, and make a nice straight line. And then I'm going to cut on that line. Now if I measured correctly with my little strip, then it should be a square. Now we are going to make a tessellation using this model here. So if later you want to come back to this and you want to just pause on here so you can see all the steps, that's totally cool. I'm going to show you step by step. So first I'm going to make this curve that will be at the top kind of by its eye and then to its mouth. And I'm going to cut on this. I'm going to cut very carefully on this line and I'm also going to keep this piece. I do not want to lose this piece because I will need it in order to make this template. Alright, so now I'm going to use that piece. I'm going to flip it like a pancake and I'm going to match up the corners. Now I usually like lick my finger so that I can get a little um, more traction and then just kind of keep it in place very carefully and trace on the edge of that. And once again I'm going to cut this out very carefully and I'm going to keep it because I'm going to need it for this template. Okay, so you can see how these pieces would fit in. And now I'm going to take it from the right and I'm going to slide it to the left. Take it from the right, slide it to the left. I'm going to make sure that the edges match up. And then I'm going to get a little piece of tape. It doesn't matter what kind of tape, whatever tape you have at your house and you're gonna tape that piece down. Then I'm gonna do it with the top edge. So I'm gonna make sure it really matches up well. It should not overlap. It has to be next to each other and exactly next to each other. All right, so I kind of have the right form, but now I need to make what will later be the top fin. So I'm actually drawing it on the bottom I'm going to cut this out and then I'm going to slide it to the top. So I'm taking my scissors, I'm cutting very carefully. I'm going to go from this left side and then I'm going to go from the right side. And I'm doing that because that top corner I felt like would be too hard to get my scissors around. And so I'm cutting it from each side. Now it's going from there to the top. Now if you watch, this would be wrong because it has to line up exactly. The good thing is, is you've got that little line from where the two papers matched up and you can use that to help you line this piece up. So once again, you're going to get some tape. You're going to tape this down and now you have your template. So this is your template of your fish and you're going to use it on this big white paper and you're going to use it with your pencil. So you want to kind of line it up well. You don't want it going kind of diagonally. Or maybe you do, maybe you want your whole thing going diagonally, but you're gonna have to um, hold it down very carefully. And if you notice, my pencil is straight up and down and I'm trying to keep it straight up and down so that as I trace, the pencil will be consistent all the way around. Sometimes you have to move your hand a lot and it's kind of tricky holding it in place and not letting that template move. Okay, so I've traced around it once. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide it to the right and it should match up. If it doesn't, something is in the wrong place and you might have to readjust 
or take some tape off, fix some things. So once again, I'm going to trace around this. I accidentally made a mistake there. I'll have to erase that later. And I'm just going to go around again very carefully. Now the cool thing is I don't have to trace on the left hand side because it was already there from before. So I've done it once and now I'm going to go down this time and this should match up exactly. If it doesn't, that means your top piece is not in the right spot. Maybe it moved over a little bit. You might have to untape it and retape it so that it does match up. All right. So once again, going very carefully around each part, holding it still so that it's all matching. Notice nothing is overlapping. All right, so I'm going to finish this out. Of course, this is time lapsed, so it's going faster than real life. And now it seems like it's done, but it's really not because you need to go back up to the top and all you're gonna do is make these little tiny lines, but it really makes a difference because it helps show where those top fish really would be. Now I'm gonna go down the side and watch, I'm just making one little line, but it just makes a lot of difference to show the full tessellation. I'm gonna finish up at the top, holding it still. And now here it is. So here is my full drawn tessellation. Now I'm gonna go back through and I'm gonna make some details. Now I'm making the eye and I'm gonna add in a couple other details. As I did this, I wished later that I wouldn't have put these little lines in. I wish I just would have done it later with the marker, but that's okay. You know, you learn as you go. So the other thing is that I want to make sure I'm putting this side fin in. And then there are some parts that I looked at that I was like, man, I wish that was a little more rounded. And so I just kind of drew in the rounded part of it. Like I didn't want the top of the fish to look quite so pointy. And I wanted that fin at the bottom to be more rounded. So I'm going to go through and finish drawing it out. And there it is, all drawn. I decided to use watercolor on mine and to do a pattern with my watercolor. And later I went in with a big thick Sharpie and the little ultra fine. Now create your own fish tessellation.